On a gray January day, a tiny flash of riotous color interrupts the dreary winter landscape at Great Falls Park in Montgomery County. The aptly named Painted Bunting. It's this small sparrow-sized bird that's just extraordinarily colored. It's green and blue and red. Uh, it's vibrant, it's, it's fabulous. First spotted on New Year's Eve, this solitary straggler's appearance in the park, nearly 1,000 miles north of the species' closest wintering grounds, has attracted a flock of eager birders, among them lifelong avian enthusiast Gabriel Foley. He's down at the very bottom now, almost where there's a little bit of green. I came out to see this bird for the first time on January 1st. Uh, I, I got an alert that a painted bunting had shown up and I thought, oh man, this is a bird I, I've got to see in Maryland. It may have gotten up here just because of a, a weather event. It could be a genetic thing that's telling it to migrate to, to the wrong place. But uh, he, here he is all by himself, mostly just hanging out with the drabber brown sparrows and uh, just enjoying his celebrity status a little bit. But while this particular bird's appearance is something of an anomaly, there's a chance that local birders might have more opportunities to see painted buntings in the future. As climate change pushes the species' summer breeding grounds north from Florida and Georgia into North Carolina and beyond. In fact, in 2017, the first record of painted buntings nesting in Virginia was discovered during something called the Virginia Breeding Bird Atlas. A breeding bird atlas is this effort to try and document all of the birds that are breeding within a, a certain region. But Maryland's own breeding bird atlas, the state's third since the 1980s, is currently underway with Gabriel at the helm as atlas coordinator. It started last year in 2020 and it's gonna run for five years. The objective is to try and get into every corner of the state and to find every single species that breeds here. I think that it's a possibility that we could get painted buntings nesting in Maryland. Already, atlasing efforts have turned up at least one southern transplant, the Mississippi kite. The Mississippi kite is a raptor that is normally in the southeast and also in the prairie west, but year by year they're starting to come up and now we have a well-known sighting in Rockville, Maryland. Smack dab in the middle of the suburbs. I'll be documenting this for the breeding bird atlas. It is a, a pair that have nested and a nestling has been seen and being fed, so it has the highest confirmation, nest with young. Emily Huang is a volunteer atlaser, one of many who make this massive citizen science project possible. All of the data collection is by volunteers, and it's just this monumental effort. We've got about a thousand people who are involved with it right now. Today, Emily is atlasing at the McKee Beshers Wildlife Management Area in Montgomery County where she also serves as the county level atlas coordinator. Atlasing is very similar to birding. Basically, you bird as you normally would. In addition, you spend a little time watching the behavior of the birds that you see. And logging any signs of breeding activity. For example, this great crested flycatcher carrying food for its young into the atlas's data collection platform called eBird which assigns specific codes to everything, from the bird simply being in the right habitat at the right time, to singing, to nest building, to actually spotting a baby bird in the nest. And anybody can go and look almost in real time and see the results. So if you wanted to see, well, where are bald eagles nesting in Maryland? You can go to eBird and you can find where the eagles are nesting in Maryland down to within three miles. The whole state and D.C. is divided into what I believe are 1,300, 1,302 blocks, approximately three by three mile areas, and each sighting is tied to a particular block. Blocks are usually best taken care of by someone adopting them, so a volunteer birder will bird across the whole block, covering all the different habitats that are found there. Whether woodland, 
farmland, suburbs, wetland, or water. Dave Brinker is the central region ecologist with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. On the Breeding Bird Atlas, you want to develop breeding records for all species of birds. My approach is uh, I develop records of the birds that are breeding on islands that are hard to reach. Not to mention off limits to protect the vulnerable young birds. Today, he's out on the water near Ocean City with Worcester County Atlas Coordinator Dave Wilson, atlasing water bird colonies. I saw three fledgling royal terns, and I can see a number of, of fledgling laughing gulls in here too, so that means it's, that's confirmed breeding. Well, you know, the Breeding Bird Atlas is done every 20 years. Over the past 20 years and the 20 years before that, we've seen substantial changes. Including some new arrivals, like the brown pelican, first recorded nesting here in 1986, and some losses and steep declines. Birds like the common tern, listed as state endangered in 2016, plus a lot of movement. These water birds breed in colonies on islands that don't have predators. And islands are a resource that comes and goes, and so the water bird populations move around. Take this island, for example, currently home to nesting populations of brown pelicans, double-crested cormorants, and herring gulls. 20 years ago, uh, there were no pelicans on this island. 20 years ago, this island wasn't here. Created using dredged material back in 2014, erosion and sea level rise have gradually eaten away at this once much larger island. At the rate it's disappearing, it probably doesn't make it more than two years, and, and it's gone. The latest in a long list of lost islands. But where the atlas is concerned, it can be just as important to understand where birds aren't breeding as it is to know where they are. You can use this and compare it to past atlases and see how bird distribution has changed over time here in the region. And by correlating those changes with forces like deforestation, development, and climate change, scientists can begin to unravel the question of how to best protect the state's bird populations, both for their sake and for ours. It sounds funny, but you know, I have a lot of memories of instances where I just got eye to eye with a bird or a bird just sat still for me or sang. Those types of connections are very precious.